This episode of the ResortLoop.com podcast is brought to you by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. Joffrey's is proud to be the official specialty coffee of Disney. Enjoy drinks and pastries at Joffrey's kiosks throughout the parks and check out the Disney specialty coffee collection only at joffreys.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Please board quickly and safely. Our monorail will be departing momentarily. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to ResortLoop.com. I'm your host, Bob Collar. Uh, Tim has allowed me to uh, take over the microphone for this show because uh, I, I kind of needed... Um, to address a, a the uh, PBS documentary, uh, The American Experience, uh, Walt Disney. Um, I've kind of it's been a few weeks since this documentary came out, and this uh, this topic has kind of been um, <laughs> fermenting inside of me for a little while. I I, I wanted to make sure that uh, I wasn't going to give away any spoilers when I talked about it, so I allowed a little bit of time to uh, pass so that, uh, you know, if if you wanted to see it, see it. If you if you didn't see it yet, um, I, won't, I won't talk too much about uh, some of the things that uh, um, you'll like about it, I'm sure, but um, let me just, uh, let me give you a little bit of background on me, uh, because I'm going to take a little different tack than a lot of the uh, uh, Disney uh, blogs and, and other podcasts have taken on this um, because I have I have a little bit of experience in documentaries. I, uh, I studied uh, uh, broadcasting at Youngstown State University. I actually gra- graduated with a degree with that uh, from Youngstown State University quite a long time ago. Um, I actually had some fantastic instructors, professors back then that uh, Prior to me arriving at Youngstown State, they uh, they had a young man by the name of uh, Edward O'Neill uh, was one of their uh, students, and um, uh, mo- most of you know him as Al Bundy, or uh, the grandfather on uh, Modern Family. Um, he actually went to Youngstown State, and I I studied under some of the teachers that uh, that he studied under. So uh, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Where that's. Uh, um, concerned so um that's kind of the the tact i want to take one of the the very important things that a a person who's putting together a documentary if they're truly trying to put together a historical document a historical documentary and that and that's really kind of important because what a, a documentary filmmaker uh, television producer or whatever you want to call them is is putting together is is a a history lesson if you will and it's very important that by doing that you have to get it right you have to make sure that you are not there's two things that are really important the basics of the documentary have to be number one you can never ever apply the current moral or social values to past history you just can't do that because history we we have evolved as a society as as a human society uh for the most part from what we were nearly a hundred years ago you're talking about uh, a a history lesson that is almost a hundred years old at this point Uh, so you can never ever take what we know today as morality wise and socially and apply those those standards to what happened back uh, in, in past history the the second thing you can never do when you're when you're uh, writing about history or being a, a documentary uh, filmmaker is uh, you never can apply uh, speculation or hearsay or your own opinion uh, or though the opinion of others uh, that really either didn't experience uh, this history or uh, are simply just um, giving their opinion on that history. And um, in my opinion, and granted, I don't have the, the background that these producers at, at PBS uh, have. I've, I have produced, directed, and uh, edited, filmed a, a documentary, um, but I don't certainly don't have their credentials. However, um, they, they failed on both of those points, two of the biggest points that you want to make. 
Um, there seemed to be an agenda that was being um, portrayed there uh, about Walt Disney. A lot of uh, missteps. The fact that they had um, the access to the massive Disney files. They had access to the Disney Studio archives. They had access to the Disney Family Museum archives. They had access to people who worked specifically with Walt back in the day. And yet, the first half of the documentary, um, they used pundits. They used um, historians that didn't know Walt, had no... I mean, they had they had heard about Walt. They had studied a little bit about Walt, but they, obviously they didn't know Walt. And um, they just gave their opinion on what they thought Walt might be thinking at the time. And uh, for some of our loopers out there that, that actually practice law, you know you can't do that. <laughs> you can't put words into someone else's mouth. Even the people who worked directly with Walt couldn't necessarily say this is what Walt was thinking at the time. Um, was Walt a human being? Absolutely. We all know that. He was a human being. But he created something that has withstood almost 100 years I mean, think about that. Almost a hundred years. And uh, I think what, what this documentary was trying to do was, um, was, was bring that down a little bit. To not give it the credit that it certainly deserves. That we all, as, as Disney fans, um, think that it deserves. Um, again, the, 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 thought, the fact that they used... They had, they had Marty Scalar. They had... Um, uh, Floyd Nor Norman, they had Alice Davis, they, they had all of these, Ron Miller, uh, they had all of these Disney legends that, uh, that they did not access. Um, as, and, and when they did access them, and I know this from, from my own experience, you, when you, when you're filming a, a documentary, you are, you record hundreds and hundreds of hours sometimes and i'm sure in their this case especially they they recorded hundreds of hours of interviews and yet the interviews that they picked out were interviews that um did not necessarily put walt in a a positive light for those of you who have seen it um and that that i i think is unfair that's that's not their job should have been this is who this person was this is this is who Walt Disney was this was his history and this is what he created allow the viewer to decide what type of person Walt Disney was um, one of the things that uh, a lot of the folks are talking about on uh, uh, social media are, is uh, the relationship with uh, his father um, one of the great Disney um, biographies I think was written by Bob Thomas and it's uh, um, an American original Walt Disney uh, fantastic I've read this thing a couple of times now great biography he talks about how Elias actually went and worked uh, alongside of his son in the Disney Studios they had an, a great relationship Walt simply didn't follow in his father's footsteps he created his own path and for us, that worked out quite well. I mean, we, we've got all of the things that we have to show for what Walt did because he didn't follow his father's footsteps. Um, they also, he, in, in the um, documentary, they, they spent an awful lot of time, an awful lot of time talking about uh, the strike. And um, I have a little bit of insight uh, to that, too, because I had, uh, in, in our day and age a lot of us uh, work for corporations i work for a corporation right now and it's different working for a corporation than it is working for a family-run business i had the i had the the honor and benefit of working for a a person very much like walt disney and i'm i, I won't divulge names but uh, because i don't have the authority to do that i i didn't clear it with the, the family um but this person uh, created uh, a similar uh, broadcasting industry, uh, not a movie industry, but a, a radio and television industry. And um, 
he created started it in his in his uh, bedroom, his upstairs bedroom of his house, and built it into the number one broadcasting organization in the area. He also went through a strike, very similar, and and around about the same time as Walt Disney went through a strike. And I, again, I know this this person personally. I've I've known his family for a, a very very long time, and so I got to see some insight as to what that meant to him when when the uh, employees went on strike, and it wasn't so much of a, an attack on his company. But it was a, a personal attack because you got to remember Walt Disney, he built that company. It was it was like a child to him. It was his creation, even though they went public and they were sold on the stock exchange and all of that. He it was still his baby. It was still his lifeblood. And when the strike happened, much like to this friend of mine, when the strike happened, it was very personal and, and it cut very and hurt very deeply because uh it, they were attacking his creation, his child, everything that he had worked so hard for. And um, it's difficult for someone that is as focused as, as these gentlemen that, that have created so much to to not allow it to become personal um, because of that. I mean, we're, we're again, we're used to a society now where corporations run everything and a CEO doesn't really have that that passion. And, and it's a company to him. He's running a company. He's running, you know, thousands of employees and whatever happens, happens. But uh, to someone who built that company from the ground up and someone is attacking it, saying you're not being fair to us when and, and it. A lot of cases, if you truly read the Disney history, Disney took care of his employees. Um, One of the uh, quotes from uh, um, Bob Thomas's book, he talks about um, when the the rumors started to circulate um, that uh, the studio was fostering a class distinction. He he goes on to write, One of the rumors that the girls were being trained to replace higher-priced male artists. Not so, said Walt. The girls were being trained to make them more versatile employees to prepare for the future when men might be drafted and to give women equal opportunities with men. That's from Bob Thomas's book, uh, Walt Disney, uh, an American original. So, uh, but that's not what was portrayed in, in the PBS documentary. They made it seem like Walt, you know, there was a class uh, hierarchy within the studios um, that women were resigned to the paint and ink department. They weren't going to go anywhere any further. And again, goes back to what I said. You don't apply today's standards to what was going on in the in the past. Because really, I mean, if you think about it, back in the, the uh, early 30s, late 20s, early 30s, most women were, if they were in the workforce, they were waitresses and, and nurses and, uh, and um, teachers. So to have him bring these these folks on to do this work and then to, to promote them within the studio, um, they didn't touch on They didn't even talk about that. Didn't even talk about that. And then they went on to talk about Walt's attack on Art Babbitt, the, the artist who, who was instrumental in drawing Goofy. When if you really watch the documentary and then you watch when uh, Walt is in front of the, uh, uh, the, the board... Um, talking about the uh, communist in Hollywood um, he doesn't he doesn't mention art Babbitt at all when he's talking he he talks about uh, herb Sorrell that's who he that's who Walt mentions when when he talks about being communist he's not talking about uh, art Babbitt at all again you know you, you just want to tell the story you don't want to put a spin on it but they they decided they were going to put a spin on it And here's the problem with that. What is true? What is true and what is not true when you start to spin things like that? Because uh, I I did a little bit of research, and according to author Peter Schweitzer, in his book, Reagan's War, the epic story of his 40-year struggle and final triumph over communism, Schweitzer cites that archives, archives released by the Russian government after the fall of the USSR show that Sorrell was a Soviet spy. 
So Sorrell had always said he wasn't even a communist, and yet Peter Schweitzer, in his uh, his book on Ronald Reagan, says that archives prove that he was indeed a Soviet spy. So now, which one are we going to believe? That's something you got to think about. Um, so, I guess the bottom line, what I'm what I'm really getting at here, is that you got to be careful. You got to be careful about what you're watching. Um, in this day and age, we have um, it back in back in the old days, <laughs> when you wanted to talk about something that you felt needed to be talked about, it was called an editorial. You had to you had to do an editorial on on broadcast television you had to say this is an editorial these views and expressions are not necessarily those of this station well now we see this all the time uh anchors and and uh pundits will talk about whatever they want to talk about and put their feelings in the story and uh, right or wrong that's what we're doing now and uh, that is kind of what it seems like happened in this documentary there are a lot of other things. I mean, you've all, you guys have, have read all of the, the blogs and um, the fact that he went down to South America. They made it seem like he was running to go down to South America uh, to hide from, from that. But that was a scheduled uh, goodwill tour. Uh, they never touch on the fact that Walt Disney and the Disney Company um, did so much great work during World War II to help to help the american soldiers out the the thing that i thought was funny was when they uh, they touch on that uh, the united states government used the studio as barracks for um for the uh, uh war effort now the last time i checked <laughs> that that's why we fought the American Revolution was so that the American the government could not just place troops into your homes, nor could they place troops in businesses without the consent of that business owner. And Walt Disney invited them to use the studio any way they needed to because he cared about the country. He cared about the war effort. He was trying to help out. Um, they also they never talked about uh the contributions during World War II, nor did they ever, ever touch on the fact that him and Roy started uh, Cal Arts. Cal Arts, the, the school that John Lasseter graduated from. Cal Arts, the school that, that uh, Walt wanted so badly to have all of these young artists come and learn the trade to help the animation world. Um, so... Uh, it's it's a it's a difficult. The other thing I, I got it, and I got to touch on this when when they were talking about prior to the strike and when they built a new studio in Burbank and how it was this. Uh, they made it seem like Walt was trying to create this utopian society where, you know, they could just live there and and uh, they had restaurants and and uh, uh, sports facilities and showers and they never had to leave and it was utopia and. Have these folks ever been to Google <laughs> or Facebook or Apple or any of these uh, Pixar? I mean, all it, all the things that Walt was doing back in the 30s, the really, really good companies of today are now doing. And they're acting like, this, oh, well, this is, uh, you know, revolutionary. But that's not what they tried to pursue in, uh, in this PBS documentary. So I guess... I'll stop ranting. I'll stop stop bouncing all over the place and just say this. I give the PBS documentary, The American Experience of Walt Disney, I give content-wise, I give it a C-. minus. Now, that's a little high. I give it a D. And mostly because the entire first part of it, the first two hours, they don't even talk with the people that knew Walt Disney. They talk to people who thought they knew what Walt Disney was thinking. And uh, that's not how you do a documentary, in my opinion. And again, hey, this is my opinion. And I, I'm, allowed to, I'm allowed to voice my opinion. <laughs> so, um, so I give the content, the actual um, story, because it's not really a history of Walt Disney. It's a story of Walt Disney that, that they have decided to write it the way they want to write it. Uh, I give that a D. I give the, the fact that you can see some just incredible 
incredible new video, uh, hear some new great audio from Walt, uh, see some archived pictures that we've never seen before um, outside of the Disney Family Museum. I give that an A++. That is worth watching it. It's worth watching it. Um, but as far as uh, the content, um, we need to be we need to be very careful about how we write history, um, because really, I mean, um, without folks like us that in the in the Disney community saying, "Well, no, that's not quite right. No, that's not quite right." We know the the real back story of of Walt Disney and what what he was all about. Without that. People will watch this documentary and say, oh, see, this he wasn't such a nice guy. He was not a nice guy. And everything that I have read, everything you guys have read, the reason we go to the parks is because he was a nice guy. Because the persona, Walt Disney was a man, absolutely. But the idea of Walt Disney is something so much greater and bigger than that. It has, it has sustained almost 100 years you know, uh, don't forget Disney, the company, they, they said in the documentary how he, he was always in search of that elusive uh, best o or Oscar for best picture. The Disney company as a whole, the Disney company has had more Oscars as of this podcast, as far as I, I can recall, more Academy Awards than any other motion picture company on the face of the planet. So, would he have liked probably to have an Academy Award? Probably. For Best Picture? Probably. I agree. I think some of the animated pictures rival those of the, the you know, uh, live action pictures. Uh, that's up to the Academy. That's not up to Walt or me or anybody else. That's up to them if that's the way they want to do it. Um, but the fact that he was able to achieve all of the things that he achieved the the um, you know just being such a, a giving person that the charities that uh, that the disney company under his uh leadership the took care of and helped out uh, or are there are so many you can't even name them all probably um so anyway uh let's be careful let's be careful how we judge history because eventually we're going to be history and, and we would like history to judge us a little bit better. Um, and and I, I don't believe that PBS did a, a very good job in, uh, in, in portraying the man that, um, you know, he changed the world. Let's, let's really look at this at what it is. Walt Disney changed the world. They talk about how during the 60s, you know, he didn't want to... Uh, uh, he kept putting out these these uh, you know cookie cutter uh, family you know feel good movies. Well, why should he compromise his values and and the values of his company simply because the world was changing? He wanted us to have that escape. That's what the Disney parks are for for us to escape the real world. They talk about these these world leaders. Oh, they went to Disneyland and and got to see the a homogenized uh, uh, United States. That's not why the world leaders went there. If if those world leaders went to Disneyland to see what the United States was about, they were horrible world leaders. They shouldn't have been world leaders because they I mean, really they they knew what America was all about. They wanted to escape. They went there to escape the real world for just a few hours which is why we go and and when you hear these people want to tear down something that that is uh, it, it, that is good and wholesome and happy and and act like well that's it's not good then what is good what is good should we just continue to uh, you know live in the real world and be in, in you know feel horrible all the time or should we have a little bit of an escape and, and be able to to take advantage of Walt of what Walt Disney gave us, which is that wonderful uh, theme parks, the wonderful movies, the the escape from the real world just for a little bit. So, um, you know, if if you look at the history of great human beings on this planet, uh, the Walt Disney, the Steve Jobs. Bill Gates, and you can, you know, 
Obviously, there are critics. Obviously, there are people that they stepped on their toes. They didn't like them. But they changed the world. These are people that have changed the world. And, and it's not right to try and take that away simply because, yeah, they were real people as well. And they were people that didn't really care for them. But they still, if you look, even to this day, the number one recognized face on this planet, no matter where you go on this planet, is Mickey Mouse. You show anybody anywhere in, on the face of this planet a picture of Mickey and they'll know who it is. I don't even remember who the producers of this documentary are. I don't think that they're going to have that same lasting effect as Walt Disney did. Anyway, <laughs> that's my rant, folks. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for allowing me to uh, grab the microphone for this. Uh, that's my two cents. Um, if you guys, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, missteps in the in the documentary. Feel free to uh, follow along. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, other blogs have touched on it. Uh, I just kind of grazed the surface here. I was, I was feeling it inside and needed to get it out. I hope some of this made sense. And uh, for now, that's all I've got. And uh, you guys know where to find us on social media. So as Tim says, uh, you've been listening to The Gateway to the Magic. See you, everybody. it to do over again would you do any part of it differently well if i had it to do over again uh, i think uh, no i don't think it would <laughs> i don't know i hope i don't have to do it over again <laughs> <laughs>